Salam Chitori. Hi, everyone. Let's start healing. I'm Adrienne Murchison. Welcome to our Let's Start Healing podcast. Salam Chitori is how I greeted you today. That's because we have more in common than we think. And what we have in common can change the world. And we are spreading our wings some here at Let's Start Healing. We are now available on more platforms. You can listen to episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and you can also listen to all of our episodes on our Let's Start Healing podcast channel on YouTube. And also remember to follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, and email me at Let's Start Healing Podcast at gmail.com. So my guest today, his name is McAllison. And let me tell you, he is a very, very spiritually wise man. And he is going to share a lot of profound things about his understanding of God, his dark days of alcoholism before recovery, and uh, how he stays grounded, really. Uh, he is going to go deep. And we are only using uh, McAllison's first name uh, to protect and respect the anonymity of his 12-step recovery program. McAllison and I will chat some about A Course in Miracles. And if you are a regular listener, you've heard uh, conversations on occasion uh, about A Course in Miracles with a few of our guests. Uh, and I study A Course in Miracles, and the basic concept of the Course is that we are an extension of God. We are the thought of God, and that God loves His creations. We are love because God is love. And according to the Course, when we do anything that is not in love, from having a negative thought to... Um, harming someone in the most horrible way or ourselves in the most horrible way, then we have forgotten who we are. And that is the reason for what we um, have done. And it's a book that people uh, have been drawn to from all different faiths. And uh, even though it is a book that is in the voice of Jesus, people who are definitely non-Christian have been drawn to, to this book. And so um, Jesus in the course uh, is the atonement. So anything that we think we've done that we would call a sin, as I said, from the most horrible thing, according to uh, this book and the idea of this book, then Jesus atoned for it. So anything we think we've done, according to the course, Jesus has atoned for that already. And that's put forth in the book to help us to forgive ourselves. And the idea is, if I can forgive myself, then I can forgive my fellow man. So McAllison and I are going to touch on A Course in Miracles in some deeper aspects a little bit. And I just wanted to lay a little bit of foundation, but I'm excited for you to meet him. As I said, he is a very wise man. When you hear McAllison share aspects of his, of his life, uh, it's going to be obvious that, of course, he could write a book just based on his life story. But I told him offline he should write a book just on wisdom. I mean, the man is kind of a sage. <laughs> That's what I think. But uh, let's meet him. Let's get started. And let's start healing. Welcome, McAllison. It's good to be here, Adrian. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you. I was just um, trying to say to you how much I enjoy and get so much out of you and your wife and what you bring to the Course in Miracles group mm -hmm. that we um, attend together. Yeah. And I feel like you you two just started coming, but I definitely remember it was 2000 and. 
15, I want to say, because I remember I had a a niece come with me to the group and I remember that year, but Mm -hmm. time goes by so fast. Mm -hmm. It goes by so fast. So how did you two come upon A Course in Miracles and how did you get to, how did you discover it and how did you get to, you know, the point where you said, hey, this is a part of my spiritual journey? Mm -hmm. Uh, that that's a very good question. We we started out on the journey almost together uh, around 2012, 2013, mm-hmm. and um, we were introduced to it by a very good friend of ours from Louisiana, who. Um, had been involved in A Course in Miracles for some time. Mm-hmm. And A Course in Miracles is not something that you prostitute. Prostitute? I know exactly well, yeah, you what you know you're what I'm saying. talking about. I, <laughs> it'll come, yeah. Prostitute, you know. And uh, so um, we, uh, Carrie and I were, um, had reached a, a point in our spiritual journey where we hit a wall of sorts. It's like a, a lot of the old belief systems that that we had been both raised with were just not working. Mm-hmm. So um, our friend Laura, you know, and, and just listening to us, and and both both Carrie and I were very much uh, students of people like Wayne Dyer. Yeah, uh, we knew who Marianne Williamson was, but we hadn't put like a Course in Miracles together yet in all of that, mm-hmm. and, and a couple of other spiritual teachers. So uh, when Laura began to just very, you know, matter-of-factly talk about A Course in Miracles, we said, we got to get this book. Yeah. So uh, Carrie, being the avid reader she is, uh, sent off for the book. And we started reading it. And boy, Heidi. That, that was an adventure. Yeah. That, that will... I tell my nephew, I know my nephew one day, he said, um, yeah, um, I'm going to get this book and that book and um, and then I'm going to read A Course in Miracles. And I said, uh, that's not a book that you just say, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna you know read. what, I think I'm going to, you know, knock this out. Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it doesn't happen like that. <laughs> <laughs> So you got the book. So we and, got the book, uh-huh. and um, we we started reading it. Uh huh. And it, you know, it it was mind boggling. Yeah, it was. I mean, it it took everything that you thought you believed, and just turned it upside down. And so you know, we knew at that point that we were going to need a teacher, so, mm-hmm. somebody to help us with this. You know, and. For, for quite a while, you know, I, I looked and tried to find something, and as luck had it, there was nothing until uh, one day, just on the internet, as plain as day, our Clarice... You saw the meetup group. I saw the meetup group, you know, and uh, knew I, I, I got I to gotta get to this thing. Mm-hmm. And um, we... Uh, I went. And so when you said that it turned everything you believed on your head, do you remember, was it, it it wasn't in such a way that you said, no, I don't want to go forward with this idea or, you know, what it was, what was speaking to you about it that you said, this is intriguing. I want to know more. And you didn't reject it. It, it, answered some real basic questions that it, it was like, how, how does that book know about these questions that I have? And what were some of the questions you had? Um, the questions were like the God thing, you mm-hmm. know, the, the creation of the world. And I just couldn't find God here mm-hmm. as I, as I had been taught, you know, I was mm-hmm. like, God wouldn't do this. I mean, the the pain and the suffering in the world and, um, you know, people trying to get along with one another. None of this stuff made sense to me, even when I was a kid, mm-hmm. you know. And and this this idea of the ego. And prior, prior to and in conjunction with um, finding A Course in Miracles, um, I had come across Eckhart Tolle. Mm-hmm. And, and so, so Eckert was one of those, 
those souls that opened up the window for me, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and I also come out of, um, a 12 step program Mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the 12 step program answered questions for me up into a point, you know, um, that I, I got, I got halfway there, but you know, it would pose questions to me like our problems we believe are basically of our own making. Mm -hmm. And then I would think, well, what about the ones that aren't? (laughs) (laughs) What about those, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, liquor we believe is but a symptom. What about these other things? And it, it sort of just, it, it was leaving me halfway there. And then there's a portion in, in some of the, the literature that, that I ascribe to it and where it talks about the spiritual axiom of anytime you get upset, no matter what it's on you. Mm -hmm. That was very difficult for me. I couldn't understand that. As in the way that I think of that is in it's on my interpretation of the thing that I'm saying is upsetting me. Is Mm -hmm. that, is that the way you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, it's going to come back on me. It's going to come back on me. It's going to come back on me. And what am I going to do with that? I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't have the tools to do Mm -hmm. those things, you know. And I had, um, I kept hitting these walls, you know, in in my recovery process. So when I started reading A Course in Miracles, the proposition there was that I was doing it to myself. Mm -hmm. Now, I couldn't buy it totally, but it made more sense than anything to me. Right. Suppose I was doing it to myself. Suppose I was, in fact, the problem and there's no way out of it Mm -hmm. until I can come to some deeper understanding of what is that really all about, you know? And and I I can't tell you how I got this. I don't know where it came from. But I always suspected that God didn't really do all this. Now, I don't know where I got that from, Mm -hmm. Adrian. I I don't. But I just had this this suspicion in my mind. So when I started reading a course where it just unequivocally says, God didn't create this world. And it it made sense to me. I went, I can see that. Now, that's a radical idea for a lot of people. That is a radical idea. Yeah. But, but, I was so desperate Mm -hmm. to make sense out of this thing that it's like, tell me more, tell me more about this idea. And as I kept reading it, you know, my old, my old notions of what Jesus was. And I I mean, I couldn't even say that word. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus, Holy Spirit. And and I, I was raised in a very strict Catholic faith. And at one time studied to be a Catholic priest on my way to a Trappist monastery. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was, I was really trying to do the work and even that it wasn't making sense, you know? So when I began to read what the course was saying and, and just giving it a little bit, it's, it caught on pretty quickly Mm -hmm. because I couldn't refute anything. So like, again, tell me more, tell me more. So, uh, I, I began to have these moments of, um, awareness that were so deep and profound that I I couldn't argue with that. It's like, you're kidding. Mm -hmm. Could, could I really have been doing this to me? Mm -hmm. And that little voice started coming in and going, yeah, I think so. (laughs) I think so, but it's okay. Right. It's okay. It's Mm -hmm. okay. You know? So, um, I, um, I began, like I said, to, to look for a teacher, uh, a study group. I, I needed to find some other people. And, and I was talking with my friend, Laura, back in Louisiana. And, you know, she, once, once we connected on that, and I, I would go back to her and I'd say, okay, now let me make sure what this thing is saying so I'm not making it up. It's saying right. this, this, and this. And she'd go, oh, yeah. Yeah. I know for me, I, I would, when I first started reading it, and I would come across something that spoke exactly to what I was experiencing mm-hmm. at that time. And I used to look at it and say, 
I'm just interpreting it this way, or am I just interpreting this way, you know, it this way, or is this really speaking to exactly what I'm experiencing? Mm -hmm. And it was, Mm -hmm. it was. And it's interesting to me how, um, like we both come from, you come from the Catholic church, I come from the Catholic Mm -hmm. church, and um, I wasn't thinking of becoming a nun or anything like that, but very, very, I find the church uh, is a really holy space. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so I find A Course in Miracles to be very holy. Mm -hmm. It's a holy book to me. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so love just jumps Mm -hmm. out of that book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, um, and the harder things like this world isn't real Mm -hmm. or my body isn't real, Mm -hmm. I just kind of put that on the shelf for Mm -hmm. a long time because Mm -hmm. I couldn't, I couldn't get on board with that and I didn't really understand. And then, it was that kind of worked for me because the more I stayed with the love, you know, and the voice for God and all mm-hmm. of that, then those things that I put off on the shelf started to resonate mm-hmm. and started, I started to understand, Correct. you know, rather than, rather than me trying to fight, fight it or reject it. I just said, Oh, I'm going to put this over here, mm-hmm. you know? And then I eventually I started to understand and I'm like, well, yeah, this is true. I mm-hmm. see where this is true. Uh, yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, like, like we were talking earlier, those concepts are startling. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they, for me, they were, they were shaking me to the foundation But at the same time, it was welcomed. Mm -hmm. It was really welcoming, you Mm -hmm. know. Now, I have to say this. What what cracked me open for for A Course in Miracles was uh, recovery. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I couldn't have even begun to um, warm up to um, this type of... Of, of, of idea had I not gone through those those 12 step programs mm-hmm. where you know I, I never dreamed in my wildest dream that um, I could give up alcohol mm-hmm. that was just beyond me you know but it happened yeah so in 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 part of that lit- the literature that that it had that it talks about it talks a lot at, old ideas mm-hmm. and your story referring to a course or the 12 steps, the 12 steps. Uh-huh. And, and cause it's the first time I ever heard about old ideas and changing your story really mm-hmm. was in Alcoholics Anonymous. And mm-hmm. I wouldn't have bought that had I not been so desperate to be relieved of this, this double bang of a, of a, a physical addiction and a mental obsession to a substance, Mm -hmm. you know, where, you know, every day, if I wasn't drinking, I was thinking about drinking. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if if you, if you've got the gene and you've got the disease, it's not a good place to be. You're in a double bind. Yes. You know, (laughs) so, you know, your, your, your daily prayer is please God, don't let me drink today. Mm -hmm. And, and you find yourself drinking and I can't quit. You start drinking against your will and that can make Mm. you crazy. Imagine drinking against your will. Yeah. Yeah. You know, try to imagine that. Yeah. You're just going, you know, if you don't have the disease, you're, you're just going about your day and something says, um, let's, uh, let's go up to McDonald's and drink 10 shakes, Mm -hmm. you know, know, I don't want to go. Oh, I don't care what you want to do. And you find yourself in your car going to do that, and and you you can't help not doing that. And now you're doing it against your will. Mm-hmm. You know, well, you know, the alcohol for me was was that, yeah, that same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, so to be relieved of that was something I didn't think could happen. And the relief came through a process. I mean, is there, I don't know if there's even a way to put it into words. I'm just asking to be relieved of what you described. 
is that a process? Is that through a new understanding of yourself? Um, mm-hmm. Actually, I'm thinking of what's in A Course in Miracles called a holy instant, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is the way that I perceive a holy instant is I I do the work for my healing, but the Holy Spirit actually heals me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It ta- The Holy Spirit takes me that last part of the distance for my healing. Mm-hmm. And so, um, because I'm wondering how, how do you get, how do you get to the healing? <laughs> From there to here. <laughs> yeah. How do you get that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And is that, it just, is it simply yeah. a process or how do you think of it how, in terms you of your, yeah. 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 Um, there's the 12 steps. Right. That, that I know it is a daily. It, well, it, it's, it's the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. Right. Where mm-hmm. It's a process. It right. It really is because mm-hmm. What's going to have to happen here is you're going to have to have a, a spiritual awakening in order for all of this to, to happen for you. You know, Mm -hmm. uh, you were talking about the holy instant, Mm -hmm. you know, where in that moment something happens. And I think, um, for the alcoholic or chemically dependent person, the holy instant for us looks something like this. It's a bottoming out at a point where you're just done. There's got to be another way. And it's Mm -hmm. so, it's so coincidental because Bill, uh, Bill Thetford Mm -hmm. and, uh, Helen uh, Shuckman. Shuckman, what happened for Bill was, I mean, they were in such for a course in miracles. For a course in miracles, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. They, I mean, they were at each other's throats, and they were under such stress and duress, and a lot of resentment and grievances, that one day Bill just goes to hell, and he said, "There's got to be another way." Yeah. And in that moment, and she agreed, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll and I'll help you find it, Bill. Mm-hmm. You know, and they usually didn't agree on anything. Yeah. You know, so I find it very interesting that. Bill's Bill's bottom was there's got to be another way and for the alcoholic me in particular was I hit that bottom and there's got to be there's got to be a way out of this there's got to be a way out of this alcoholism please God help me mm-hmm. and and those are powerful words you know be careful with what you ask for in in those times of desperation because what's happened I think for for that individual is that so many things have been cleared away and and it's burning it off to where you finally are at that cracked open point of you you get the message out and you really mean it sincerely and spirit or whatever is your higher power now now we can do business mm-hmm. you're not playing around anymore mm-hmm. now I can help you. Are you willing to go to any length, though, to make that happen? And, and when that alcoholic goes to, you're willing to go to any length to have this, this obsession lifted, this merciless obsession lifted from you. Mm-hmm. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. Just please help me. Mm-hmm. Boom, something happens. It's that holy instant. And, and you find yourself at an AA meeting, you find yourself getting a sponsor, you find yourself willing to go to any length. Do you, if you're comfortable sharing at all, do you remember what your bottom was? Is that something you're comfortable sharing? If not, it's no, fine. No, no, I, 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 I'd be glad to. <laughs> uh-huh. um, I, I, my trek through, um, through this program um, has been one of... Um, It's not been easy. It, it's taken me three three tries, but the, on the third try, the, the deal is keep coming back, no yeah. matter what, keep coming back, uh-huh. you know. Um, there towards the end, uh, this is around 2007, uh, my, my alcohol was so out of control that, I mean, I knew, I knew that death either spiritually or physically, was imminent. I knew that at a guttural level. And I remember one night um, being very, very out of it, inebriated, uh, just crying out. 
you know, it's just because I couldn't quit drinking. Like I said earlier, uh, I was drinking against my will and, and it had to stop. And I remember one night I was in my backyard and it was, it was a beautiful night. And I remember looking up at the stars and just crying out as a prayer of desperation. Please, God, if you're up there, I need some help. Now, you got to understand, um, I had tried to get sober in 1982. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't willing to give up those old ideas. Mm-hmm. I wasn't willing to go to any length, you know. And um, went back out, stayed sober for a few years, and went back out. And then um, as as the, the disease is progressive. It, it, it gets worse, never better, right? So um, that first time that I went in, you know, I, I will tell you, when I tell my story, I, I, I tell them, I said, hey, the first time I came into Alcoholics Anonymous, my ass was on fire. That's why I came here, mm-hmm. you know? The second time I came in, because the, the, the disease is progressive, um, was um, the result of an intervention. Mm-hmm. Okay. The third time, um, and I stayed sober working the program and doing all the things that I needed to do uh, for almost 15 years. Well, mm-hmm. 10, 10 years doing it. And then five years, I just, at the last five, I just sort of started slowly, slowly mm-hmm. getting off the program, mm-hmm. you know. So I went back out again. The third time, um, what and, and again, the disease is progressive. The third time was a very serious suicide attempt mm. involving a weapon. And, uh, but for the grace of God, they took the weapon away and um, I began that, that trek back yeah. to, to hold this. You know, we, we talk about, you know, the first step of Alcoholics Anonymous is we admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives had become unmanageable. Boy, Heidi. <laughs> you know, that, that was me. Mm-hmm. You know, the second step is we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity, which is wholeness, you know. And the third step, we talk about um, we make a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understand God. Yeah. So, you know, when, when they take a gun out of your hand, you know, you 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 begin to see that this thing is progressive and it's trying to kill me. It really is, you know? So, um, I, um, Mm. I began, I began the the journey back Mm -hmm. and, you know, even, even during that initial recovery period, um, I, I had some dark nights of the soul. I did, but I didn't want to go. I, I, something, I just didn't want to go back to that, you Mm -hmm. know? So, um, time progressed and, um, I, uh, I got, got into recovery mm-hmm. and, um, started doing everything that I was told to do. I, I quit sort of questioning it, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. just tell me where I, where I need to go. What do I need to do? Mm-hmm. And, and it caught on. And d- even during all of this time, uh, I knew that something still was missing. I knew because I, I'd gotten sober twice. This is the third time. You know? Yeah. So um, as as I began to get better, I knew that the key to this whole thing was going to be some advanced um, quantum spirituality, mm-hmm. which the program of AA it, it talks about that. It it says you know you're right. You're going to have to collapse grow. time. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You're going to have to grow here. Mm-hmm. You, you know, I, I look at it, it's very similar to a shark swimming in the water. A shark doesn't have gills, it can't stop. The moment a mm. shark stops swimming, it goes down. Hmm. It's got to swim in order right. to get the water to go through its gills yeah. so that it can absorb the oxygen to mm. live, mm-hmm. you know. So as someone with this disease of alcoholism, if the moment I quit swimming, I'm going down. So I've got to be... a on a continuous journey of, of spirituality. I, I can't, I can't stop and go, oh, well, I'm just going to take a vacation here. Right. Because the moment I do, the shark 
mm-hmm. you know, syndrome will get me. I go down. So I, I needed something that was going to work and, and I could live with. You know, it's sort of like this wasn't going to be like a dieting thing. Mm-hmm. This is going to have to be lifestyle. I, I, um, I'm thinking a couple of things I don't want to forget. And I'm already, I'm already forgetting a little bit. Um, I just feel like you're for me. And I, I hope this is true for listeners too. Like you're saying some really significant things, Mm -hmm. you know, one about how the disease is progressive. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And, um, now I have, alcoholism in my family Mm -hmm. and it's very familiar Mm -hmm. you know I mean if I'm gonna be around a substance I'm comfortable being around alcohol Mm -hmm. you know because it's so familiar Mm -hmm. and even for me I found that really interesting you know how the disease is progressive Mm -hmm. and um, my brother died of cardiac arrest, Mm -hmm. but he basically died of alcoholism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was, it was funny because not long after he died within a few months, I found this, I came across this article in the New York times, I think and this woman was saying how her husband, she tells people her husband died of a heart attack because Mm -hmm. he did, Mm -hmm. but he really died of alcoholism. Mm -hmm. And it resonated so much for me because of my brother, Mm -hmm. you know, I just, uh, it was, it really touched me because Mm -hmm. it's just something. I mean, he's not the first person in my family to have, Mm -hmm. to be an alcoholic, Mm -hmm. but to see what it did and he did not have a will to live. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was worried for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, directly said he did not have a will to live. Mm -hmm. And then he, he at one point seemed to have a will to live. And I felt so happy Mm -hmm. about that. And, um, but I think in our, and I'm speaking for myself, although I'm going to say my family, I think in, you know, our desire for him to get better, um, I don't know that we considered this is progressive. Mm -hmm. We just know this is what you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the problem. Mm -hmm. Will you please try to get some help? Mm -hmm. But we weren't thinking this is a progressive disease. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, certainly we could see what it was doing to his body. Mm -hmm. But um, I just think that that's so significant Mm -hmm. you know it just brings a new level of understanding Mm -hmm. and um there was something else you just said um i'm gonna have to come back to it because there was something else you said Mm -hmm. before i interrupted uh one of see one of the things too that um can be startling especially for the alcoholic and and for other people Mm -hmm. they really pay attention is it was really interesting because the, the, the disease is progressive. So it doesn't matter whether I drink or not. Mm. It doesn't matter. It's still doing what it does in my body. Mm. So if I picked up today, yeah, after all of the sobriety I have from 2007, in a very short amount of time, I'm talking short days, I'm right I'm going to meet the disease where I left it. Mm-hmm. So right. it, it's already there. It's just, it, it's, it's, it's like, waiting for, it's, it's coming wait, along with you. Right I get it. Me. It's right like a car right. that's moving along with you. Right. And then if you were to start again, it'd be like, Hey, here I am. Here get I on am. board. Want to ride? Want to ride? Yeah. So, <laughs> it's your old friend. Remember yeah. me? Yeah. I've been waiting for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm mm-hmm. sorry, were you going to? Well, no, the the other thing, too, that that is so interesting about the disease is that, you know, I I went for almost 15 years with no alcohol in my system. And when I went back out again in a matter of days, Mm -hmm. a matter of days, that happened to me. So all of the work that I had done and all the stuff that I knew about alcoholism and what I'd read in the big book, the horror and the terror was whenever I realized all that stuff that I had read and studied and done and knew came to life. And I went, oh my God, what they were saying 
was true. Mm. So, and and that's why you start over because I don't know if I ever fully understood where if you have 15 years under your belt and matter. then you drink you and then over. you start again, you're back at square one. You're back at day well, one, right? Well, you're at day one, like just on your, your sobriety. Day that's count. what I mean. But, mm-hmm. but there's a big but here. Mm-hmm. You all of all of the stuff that you do is held in trust. Mm-hmm. Trust me, it's held in trust. So the first time I was sober for about three years, I go back out and then I get sober and it, all that was held in trust. Mm-hmm. So it comes and it meets me. Mm-hmm. All right. So during those, that, that long stretch there where I was sober, it, it's okay. I'm not going to lose that only in day count, but that. Cause God's not going anywhere. God's not going anywhere, mm-hmm. you know, and, and God is going to deliver that back to me when I'm sitting with another alcoholic who just relapsed and I can say, let me tell you my story. Right. And they go, wow, really? You had how much time? Wow. You know, I had five years. We don't want to compare and contrast, you know, that I'm mm-hmm. not saying we're doing to do mm-hmm. that, but he, I can share with him. Let me tell you what it's like after 15. So you lost five, but you're back. Right. We're so glad you're, that's all we're going to look at mm-hmm. is that you're back. You know, what, what are we going to do different this time? You know, how are we going to, what old idea that you, did you hold on to Mm -hmm. that caused you to do that? You know, so we're going to look at what caused you to go back Mm -hmm. out. The, the other thing too, that, that I wanted to address with you and and talking about your family is this recovery process for the family, because I'm also an Al-Anon, I do both. uh, The, the recovery process through say Al-Anon it's counterintuitive to what you think needs to be done here. Because in order to help the alcoholic and me being one, I can tell you the worst thing you can do is to talk to me about my alcoholism. I don't want to hear anything you have to say. Mm-hmm. Now, if you want to get my attention, go to an Al-Anon meeting and start ignoring me and my alcoholism. <laughs> now I'm going, well, where are you going? What you doing? <laughs> Who are you talking to? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, the curiosity starts turning, you know, the, the spirit will use the disease against itself. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like the, the paranoia and the, the delusional thinking. It's like, you're not paying me any attention anymore. I can't control you. I want to know why I can't control you. Yeah. You know, so you're getting help and they're telling you in an Al-Anon program, it doesn't matter what McAllison says or does. You can still be happy. You're going, what? No, I need to do something. No, the something that you're going to do is nothing. Mm -hmm. You are purposefully going to do nothing. Mm -hmm. And you're going, no, it can't be. I mean, how, how's he going to get well? Well, it's not up to you. Mm-hmm. What's, what's up to you is for you to get well. And if you get well, if you change, the alcoholic has no choice in the matter. Mm-hmm. He's going to have to, she's going to have to adjust to your emotional sobriety. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. It does. But it's it counterintuitive. Does. Right. It you know, does. You need to quit drinking. You need to this, you need to that. Well, the who needs to do something actually is the Al-Anon. Right. You know, cause I, I was much, I was an Al-Anon way before I became an alcoholic way before. Cause I grew up in the disease. Yeah. I grew up in South Louisiana. I'm French. And you know, people tell, well, when's the first time you had a drink? Probably shortly after I was born. <laughs> 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 because it's just it's just part of the culture right it just I mean, yeah I, you know so mm-hmm. you know it, it's just embedded in you mm-hmm. so uh i i never never really got that until mm-hmm. i started getting well myself and saw yeah the mm-hmm. the, the and something else that you said that i think i'm i'm coming to realize is how and it's this isn't just about substance abuse, but the daily practice, mm. why that is so important. Yes, yes. And I find mm. that um, well, one, I find that true in my own spiritual walk. Mm-hmm. If I just, 
you know, poo poo a day Mm -hmm. where I'm like, well, you know, I don't really have time today to sit and pray and meditate. Mm -hmm. That's a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. I start forgetting who I am. I start forgetting what's real Mm -hmm. and what's true. Mm -hmm. And it's a very slippery slope. Mm -hmm. And now I'm finding I have to actually practice throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So I I get it. And and something that the person and, you know, I'm making this up partly. The person who brought this awareness to me was Whitney Houston Mm -hmm. watching a documentary uh, on her, you know, life. And on the outside looking in, this is somebody that seemed very close to God. Very, very, yes. yeah, very yeah. close to God. Yeah. And yeah. I could just, all I could see was that slippery slope if you're mm-hmm. not, if it's just, you know, not everybody who does, not many people. I mean, it takes like mm-hmm. a real commitment to say, I'm going to do this every day or I'm going to do this many times a day mm-hmm. or whatever your practice is. Mm-hmm. And so I could see where. That's somebody who's very close to God for me, looking mm-hmm. through my eyes. Mm-hmm. And and this is how they suffered from this disease, mm-hmm. a, a disease. And, mm-hmm. you know, their life ended tragically. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It just gave me some uh, uh, an, an understanding. I think contrasting her life with what I do know about recovery mm-hmm. and and just seeing and about my spiritual walk, just how important it is. It is, I think Marianne Williamson, she's another one that's very serious about practice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And she calls it a spiritual muscle Mm -hmm. that you have to build. Build, And it's just Mm -hmm. like if you decide you're going to the gym and then you decide you're going to stop going to the gym, well, Mm -hmm. your muscles are going to not be the same. Mm -hmm. And so it is, it's a muscle. You know, I do look at it that way. One of, you know, one of the things too that, if I could just comment on, on what you're saying, in in all of this, you know, the ego is the program running in the background. Yeah. You know, it's always, yeah, but, mm-hmm. you know, and, and one of the things, and I learned this in the Course of Miracles, and it's called judgment mm-hmm. and how it, it says to practice, 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 and don't judge yourself when you miss the practice Mm -hmm. above all, don't judge yourself because what, what I've learned here in the course in miracles is that judgment is a fuel source Mm -hmm. for all the other maladies. It's a great way to look at it. It's a fuel source for the malady, you know, Mm -hmm. because now you're judging yourself and, and, uh, Jesus talks about that, you know, Mm -hmm. all throughout. It's a constant thing. Don't judge, don't judge, don't judge. And you ask the question, why? What what is he saying about judgment? Mm -hmm. You know, so if you sit with that for just a little while and and we all have a monkey mind. So, you know, getting past the monkey to the mind is not an easy thing. But once you get there, Mm -hmm. you can begin to get those little messages and, and you'll get the message one day that judgment is a fuel source for the malady. Mm-hmm. So it's okay. Yeah. Don't judge yourself. You didn't go to the gym mm-hmm. today. Okay. What else you got? Mm-hmm. Well, the, that ego is going to come in. Yeah, but you've been doing this and then, and then, and then, and then, and then. So now that you've screwed up your whole life by mm-hmm. not going to the gym today. <laughs> right. Uh, why should you go tomorrow? Right. You go, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> so do you don't go the next day, mm-hmm. you see? Mm-hmm. So now you get into what uh, Alcoholics Anonymous will call the cunning and baffling part of the disease, mm-hmm. you see? Because once, see, once you take away the alcohol from, from, from the alcoholic, okay, now what, well, that leaves life's issues, which yeah. is where we all end up. And that, that's, that's, I was just thinking... It's it's a disease of our thought system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, whether we're on an abuse, you know, a, a substance abuse mm-hmm. or not. That I mean, I know that's how it is mm-hmm. for me. What you described, mm-hmm. my thought system, my ego. Mm-hmm. As a friend, we heard a friend say the other day, mm-hmm. wants to murder me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and and again, you see that that will come right out of Alcoholics Anonymous. I got a uh-huh. disease that's trying to kill me. Mm-hmm. So tell me about that disease. It's the disease of alcoholism, 
cloaked in the ego world. Yeah. It's just part of the bag of tricks mm-hmm. that the ego's got. Mm-hmm. He's trying to kill you yeah. to recycle you. Yeah, right. It, you know, right. And, and again, I don't I don't want to get too woo well, here. Well, so what does your what mm-hmm. does your um spirituality, your relationship with God tell you? What have what have you discovered about you and and your relationship with God? What have you discovered about you um, that propels that, you along that, your, that's your a, path? That's a very good question. Um, the you, the you that I think I'm speaking to is not this physical, what I think with a brain and a body. Mm-hmm. That's not the you. This is getting orders from something else. Now, now, how do I arrive at that? I'm not sure, Adrian. Mm-hmm. I can't quite put my finger on it. But because of the path that I've taken and sought to remove these defects of character that that I see that I have, every time I remove one of those, my concept of God changes. Mm-hmm. And God becomes more capable to do things that I didn't think he could do. So I began to see God differently. You know, the what had happened to me was God had become what I was, which was a pretty despondent, dispassionate, mm-hmm. hopeless individual. So that was what I thought God was, you know. So whenever I start removing the hopelessness of my life, my God changes. Mm-hmm. Because I have a clearer vision, you know. So I had to give up the old ideas that, you know, God was all these things. Mm-hmm. And and just in taking a few small steps, that began to change for me, you know. So, you know, my my perception of God and, and how I think about all that now, I, I don't want to make a giant leap here, but somewhere in the course it says God is and we cease to speak. Mm-hmm. Now, wrap your head around that. I mean, God is. What is God? No, God is. Right. God is. So when when I can sit with that, all kinds of possibilities begin to come into my life that I never dreamed possible. I mean, based on my, my upbringing, my ideas of what I thought things were, to be where I am today... Mm-hmm is the result of taking out those old ideas and playing, could it be? What if? Mm -hmm. Could you just imagine for a moment and just pretend? Mm -hmm. And some things began to happen. You know, it's it's like, you know, we were talking about the ice skater yeah. earlier where you push side to side mm-hmm. and you go forward, you know. So I pushed on that and I cross the center line. I get there and I push back and I realize that I'm really skating on water. The, the water I was drowning in, I'm, I'm skating on now because it's turned to ice. So who would have thought that? Yeah. You mean this... You can make ice. You you mean I can stand on this if mm-hmm. it gets cold enough? And Spirit's going, yeah, and you can skate your little ass right out of here. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Why don't you try it? Oh, I don't know. Well, here, I'll sit with you. We can talk about that. Wow. So, okay. So, uh, like, can we rewind a little bit? Sure. And um, what do you, you have mentioned, I think, offline about how, um, at one time you wanted to be a priest mm-hmm. and then a Trappist monk. Mm-hmm. And th- that was when you were around 18 or 19, 18 years, or 19 old. years old. Yeah. And where did you go to college? Uh, I, went to, yeah. I went to several colleges uh, for a short <laughs> amount of time. Uh, I, I graduated from an all boys Catholic high school, uh, that, um, my, all of my studies were towards entering the seminary. And then um, uh, the first university I attended was my hometown. It's called McNeese State University. Uh-huh. And then I ended up at the University of Southwest Louisiana mm-hmm. and uh, Immaculata Seminary. And then 
I saw that um, it just wasn't going to work. Mm-hmm. I saw that becoming a monk was not going to be the um, what you really wanted. What I really wanted, mm-hmm. and I went. Believe it or not, I went from that to the military. Mm. And within a year of leaving uh, the seminary, I was in the army on my way to Vietnam. Mm. And I spent a tour in Vietnam, Mm -hmm. came out and uh, went to work for a very prestigious law enforcement uh, organization. Mm -hmm. And I stayed there for about 20 years. And you, what were you doing? I was... um, part of a counter smuggling counter terrorism unit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That had to be exciting. That was exciting. Yeah. <laughs> it was. I mean, were you like doing spy work or an analyst or no, what we were, were you consultant or what were no, you doing? No, I was pretty much in the middle of it all, you know. I, I ended up heading the unit at before uh, I before I uh, retired. Really? Yeah. And so w- what was the work of the unit? The work of the unit was, uh, and this was in the 70s and the 80s, mm-hmm. before people really knew anything about terrorism. And this, we, we dealt a lot down with the cartels. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were part of a, a government um, agency that few people knew anything about. Mm-hmm. And um, so, and we were very, very successful in, in uh, what we did. Uh, so uh, I, I did that until I retired. The first time I retired, I was 40 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I ended out, I ended up out in um, New Mexico. Mm-hmm. And I got into the airline business. I, I, I ended up in New Mexico uh, back in um, a corporate security world because of my background and training and then ended up uh, on the operational side of the airline business. Mm-hmm. And um, as a result of that, um, I um, got back into um, the world of corporate security because by that, by that time, 9-11 had come and people with my particular um um qualifications i wanted to say your particular set of skills <laughs> particular <laughs> set of skills um you know i mean i was i'm thinking you know what what can i ever do with all this stuff that uh-huh. i have and then when when the company you know they're they constantly look for people in the company and anywhere mm-hmm. you know that w- we need some help here you know and i mm-hmm. go oh well yeah i uh, I, that's just what I did, you know? So they became, I became their new best friend. So what were you, what's the kind of thing that you were helping the airlines to do to identify something well, or in, to in the airline business? I mean, the airline business, when you fly, you're flying airplanes all over the world, mm-hmm. uh, especially, and they were trying to get down into South America at that time. Mm-hmm. And, um, American airlines had gone through a lot of grieving because of, uh, some, um, taking contraband on their airplanes out of Miami. And the particular airline that I was working for didn't want to do that. So they had the forethought to go, we, we're going to find some guys out there that can help us uh, avoid that. You know, because mm-hmm. we, planes got to come and planes got to go. And we don't need one of our airplanes seized or we don't want so you wanted to make sure they wanted to make sure no contraband no would contraband. get on the plane, no contraband in what in whatever fashion, right? right. Mm-hmm. And and crew uh, crew safety was was paramount for them because mm-hmm. you know, the 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 crews had to be safe, mm-hmm. you know, and the equipment had to be constantly monitored when you know when it was on the ground in some of these countries, you know. Um, so. I have a question. I have a part A and a part B I'm mm-hmm. going to ask offline. But mm-hmm. do you have um, like some thoughts about uh, 9-11 or after 9-11 and in incidents that took place coming from your background? Um, that's, um, that, that's, that's a question that it's kind of difficult to answer, mm-hmm. but I, I can, I can say that, um, we knew 
you know, our group knew it was only going to be a matter of time, especially after they, they tried to uh, blow that place up once before. Yeah. Down underneath. World trade. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it, it, was a, it was a matter of time before somebody did something. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, were we surprised by it? No, not really. Mm-hmm. Um, it It's what happens in today's world, you know? Right. Uh, going forward from that, um, I think, you know, we all have to take a look at our behavior. You mm-hmm. know, what what part do we play in anything that goes on out there in the world? Today? Yes. What's, mm-hmm. what's my part, you know? And it may sound trite, but if you want to change the world, start with yourself. Mm-hmm. Start with yourself, you mm-hmm. know? Start in A your thousand house. thousand percent, true. Start on your street. Mm-hmm. Start in your neighborhood. Start with your kids, you know? Don't be reactionary. I don't. think a lot of people are starting to, mm-hmm. um, although it doesn't feel like it, I do mm-hmm. think a lot of people are starting to realize exactly mm-hmm. what you're saying, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. j- exactly it, with yourself, with your children, with your neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of, one of the things too, that, um, I've come to the conclusion as a result of, of, uh, of A Course in Miracles is that things are never as they are first reported to be, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I thought in the position that I was in that I had more control than, than what I had, mm-hmm. you know, uh, we, we at that time, um, were, we had, we had made some real inroads into the, um, the smuggling of marijuana at mm-hmm. that time, you know, well, they're getting ready to legalize that. Right. So I, I spent a significant part of my life mm-hmm. interdicting drugs, massive amounts of drugs. When you say interdicting, meaning intervening with the, well, what do you mean? Is, as they're is, coming in, we are seizing these okay. these uh-huh. these drugs coming in from foreign countries. Okay. You see, because they were quote illegal. Right and now, it's legal. You know, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I um, <laughs> I been to a couple of states now where uh marijuana is legal right and it's like i'm thinking (laughs) there was a time when right for that much marijuana for you know a an ounce of marijuana you you could have had done federal time right so you know what what went on then and what's going on now two very different things Mm -hmm. and and so where do we go i i can't answer that question but but I can tell you that um, unless I let go of old ideas, and I don't, I don't have mm-hmm. a dog in that fight anymore. You know, that's I. What I'm going to do is every day I'm going to get up, do my practice, connect with a God of my understanding, mm-hmm. and see what that God wants me to do that day. Right. Right. And it, it may be to go to Washington in March. I don't know, mm-hmm. you know, but. But you're open. But I'm open. To receive. To receive. Mm-hmm. What is it that, that I need to do? It's, and and I, I, I preface that with some of the, the mistakes that I made was it's sort of a me, 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 I. What am I going to do? Mm-hmm. Whoa, wait a minute. It's not what am I going to do like that. Right. The, 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 the uh process now is wake up in the morning connect as quickly as i can with a higher power and say what am i going to do today Mm -hmm. through that higher power right to the source what would you have me do what would you have me do and i got that from a course in Mm -hmm. miracles i mean what what it proposes has been the answer to to the questions i've been asking for eons of time, mm-hmm. you know, if I, I just sit with it, I don't question it anymore. I, and that's, that's real big for somebody like me because, you know, I come from prove it, prove it, prove it, right. scientific, you know, and then even with all the scientific proof and this, that, and the other in the criminal justice system, people would be found innocent. Mm-hmm. And it was devastating, mm-hmm. you know. Well, it's, it's interesting that you were interested in the priesthood, mm-hmm. being a monk, and then you went into law enforcement, yeah. which is, you know, so opposite. Yeah. And then, you know, came out and so had to undo, mm-hmm. you know, some some concepts. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And there was a time when you said um, you had shared once that you just said, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And in another conversation, Mm -hmm. an earlier conversation, we were trying to get to Mm -hmm. what was it? Do you remember that you couldn't do what what made you say, I'm going to walk away from this? This was when you were. Mm-hmm. You had left law enforcement, and you now you're with the airlines with for the airlines, a yeah. number of years. Number of years, yeah. And and um, I I had I had um, just sort of climbed that ladder of of some um, very successful um, endeavors in in that arena, mm-hmm. and to the point where um, I was asked to to be part of a a real um small group that we were we did week long retreats with executives and managers mm-hmm. um teaching uh some sort of out of the box um leadership philosophies and we were very successful there. We were very, very successful. And as I began to um, to sit with all that, I knew that this couldn't last. I mean, this was just too out of the box. This can, was, can you give me some idea of what you mean? Well, I mean, what what we were doing was so... Um, futuristic of sorts Mm -hmm. when it came to modeling new leadership styles and and concepts we were we were we were coming from from ideas that um were being driven look look at yourself before we start trying to change other people Mm -hmm. and and change these philosophies Let's look at us first. Mm-hmm. And when you start doing things like that, um, people that are not willing to look at themselves, they get threatened by a new right belief thought system, system, a mm-hmm. new thought system. Mm-hmm. You know, and and of course, in miracles will tell you there's only two thought systems: thought system of the spirit, mm-hmm. thought system of the ego, Pick love one. and fear, love mm-hmm. and fear. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Uh, I, I intuitively knew that um, that wasn't going to work at that, that time. Gonna, that wasn't going to work at that time. Mm-hmm. It wasn't going to work because it, it, it wasn't for the masses. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not in A Course in Miracles, I'll tell you right now, it's not for the masses. Yeah. It's, it's called A Course because it's one of many. Right. And if it's for you, then you'll adjust and it'll go right in. But to some people, they find that very threatening. Yes, especially certain uh, religious mm-hmm. uh, denominations. When you you look at that, because when I first read it, I mean, I was looking for something, and I'm still going, "Whoa, wait a minute." Yeah, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> let me let me think about that. But tell me more. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I could see, and and again, um, I was on the fringes and didn't know about, know very much about A Course in Miracles, you know. I didn't know what, I didn't know that in order for the next stage in my spiritual development Mm -hmm. to occur, I was going to have to give up what I had created. Mm. And, And between my teaching partner and myself, we had created something that was phenomenal. We really had. You're saying in the corporate world. In the corporate world. Yeah. yeah it was phenomenal. I mean, mm-hmm. we, we had people wanting to hire us and other. So you were coming up with this thought system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. We were coming up with it. You wow. Know? Uh-huh. And, and um, we, it, it was growing, you know, and, and it was expanding. And um, was this in the mid 2000s? Like, this, or, yeah, this was in the 2000, yeah, mid 2000s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and going forward. And I, I had um, previously, the way that I got into all this was 
I had had so much success on my own with some of these thought processes and doing things differently that I'd always been on the radar for different people, you know, and I become a fixer in, in two organizations that I worked for and again, had incredible success. Mm -hmm. And I could have, I had to make a choice. Was I going to go with, um, I was making a boatload of money. Mm -hmm. I had benefits and privileges that few people have, you know, and the power and the prestige and the, um, people knew who I was. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it was like, if, if I would have continued that down that path, it would have been, I would have had to come back and redo all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I knew I was going to have to make a choice. Mm-hmm. choose, choose one. That's so interesting. Like you had a come to Jesus meeting with I had, yourself. I had a come to Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, it, it was, um, just walking away. So you just, just, you just, just walked away. Now, were you, um, were you married at the time? Nope. Like to, uh, um, Mm-mm. so it was just you, you just, I mean, I, I was just curious if there was anybody personally that you discussed no, this with. No, no. Um, uh, and, and that's, that's an interesting thing too. Um, I had, uh, <laughs> this is a sidebar. I had reached a point where um, I had made a decision that the way everything was lining up, it was like, I need to go back to the monastery Mm -hmm. because that, I mean, things were just like, so, um, I had always been a Harley Davidson guy. (laughs) So, um, I had made the decision that I was going to do a final ride. Mm -hmm. So, um, I literally, and I was going to ride up, ride back up. I was going out to the West. It was a Trappist monastery out there that I, was very interested in and uh, I was just going to ride the bike there and leave it <laughs> so I go down and, to, and join the monastery yeah, or uh-huh yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, so um, I went down mm-hmm. physically I went down and uh, on the bike no I went down to uh, the Harley Davidson shop oh, uh-huh. in um, Stone Mountain and was in the process of buying the bike Mm-hmm. And in the process of doing that, I was, I was short, just a little bit of money. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to have to, I wanted the bike then. So yeah. I, I need to get on with this thing. Mm-hmm. So I, the way that it worked out, I said, well, look, just I'll borrow this little bit of money. So they, they go in and they're going, because I had all the rest. Mm-hmm. So the guy, I give the guy my name and everything, you know, so he, he's gone like, you know, 30, 45 minutes. And, and I'm all this time I'm communicating with God, with what I knew God to be. And I said, look, if this, I'm, we're down to the wire here, Mm -hmm. you know, if this, if you, if I'm not supposed to do this, then you're going to have to stop it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to stop this because I'm here and this is what's happening. And it's intense. I mean, it's intense. I've, I'm in a state that I had not been in. I couldn't, but I knew that something was going on. So after 45 minutes, the guy comes back and we had been talking back and forth and he knew people in the biz. I knew people in the biz back and forth. So we had developed a relationship. So he knew I was legit, Mm -hmm. you know? So he comes back and he goes, you don't exist. And I knew in that moment, he said, give me your name again. Give me your, I just want to make sure I've got all this. And I said, no, I said, I understand what's going on here. I gave it to him. And he went, he went. So you are, you and he knew each other already. Well, just because, but, no, no, we knew each other because I was buying this motorcycle. From right. Him. And we're, you know, we're just, you know, how you're talking to yeah, the salesman sure. and uh-huh. going back and forth. Well, do you know so-and-so? Well, so-and-so was the guy that recommended me to you because you oh, sold him okay. the bike. You okay. Know? So he knew that I knew some of the same people. And mm-hmm. we're, so he's, you know. We've, we've already put together, we know the same people, Yeah, you know, and he knew the company that I work for and all this other stuff. Uh So it wasn't like I was some scammer. Yeah. So he couldn't find any trace of you? No trace of me. I did not exist. Name, 
social security number, any identifiers, nothing. And I just went, holy moly, I understand what's going on. And he was so perplexed. But I knew, I knew in that moment that that was not supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's one of the things, how do you explain that? Mm-hmm. You know, because you're there. It's not like it's woo-woo or you think that, mm-hmm. oh, whatever. Did he say, here, look, see, you try to, yeah. you know, no, he's, you, he's, you he's put wanting, in your information. put it in, yeah. Because he's one, I mean, we're talking, you know, several, several thousands of dollars for this really nice motorcycle. Mm-hmm. You know, go buy a Harley today. Yeah. So he's looking at, he wants to close the deal. Did he call like your bank or anything like that or? Uh, No, he just running me through the the Equifax just to borrow all the money. Got you, got you. However they do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh And he said, we, I don't know what to tell you. He said, I really don't know. We've never had this happen. Wow. So So at that point I knew mm -hmm. that something had Something was going on. And to I say, that you weren't supposed to do it. It wasn't. wasn't. To do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then what happened after that would be a whole nother conversation. <laughs> <laughs> because um, that was maybe in between sobriety. Um, no, that, been, was, that was in sobriety. This was in sobriety. That was in sobriety. sobriety but yeah. that was before. Because when you got the last time, that was, was like in, 2007, 2008. Yeah, I got right? sober in around 2007. I got, that's uh-huh. when I got sober. But this, I was leaving the airline business yeah. in 2012, which is when mm-hmm. this happened. Uh-huh. You know, so I, I had been sober a good while. Wow. Going, I'm leaving and this is where I think I'm supposed to go. Yeah. And this is what I'm supposed to do. And that door closed and I knew I can't imagine what you have in store for me. Well, yeah. So you're just going to leave me hanging like that, McAllison? Another you're not going to tell me what, um, I mean, you, yeah. you don't have to go much into it. Yeah. Um, but I just was curious what your trajectory was. The, to, traje- the, the trajectory yeah. was, um, I, um, Carrie came into my life. Mm-hmm. And um, for the people that know us, that's, I mean, we, you would never put us together. You know, so uh, through some very um, interesting events there, uh, we ended up getting married. I mean, you seem like the perfect couple. Oh, thank it's you. It's so funny you say that. Cause <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So um, Carrie came into my life mm-hmm. and, um, you know, we've been married now uh, going on seven years mm-hmm. and the you know, the, our, um, life circumstances and the things that we have Mm -hmm. gone through life together, um, and with family situations Mm -hmm. and other, other happenings, uh, we could not have, they say the script is written. Yeah. And and the script is written. I, Mm -hmm. I firmly believe the script is written, but had we not, had we not, um, come into the, 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 the flight path of A Course in Miracles, uh, we, we couldn't have understood all of the incredible and interesting things that occurred for us and that continued to mm-hmm. occur mm-hmm. in our lives. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. And I, I was saying earlier that the, the two of you together mm-hmm. is so rich Huh. And uh, in terms of what you offer mm-hmm. to the spiritual community, oh, you, you know, that I'm a part of, mm-hmm. you, it's so rich. And I'm just, and I had asked you if you two just end up talking for hours <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> and you said, yeah, yes, often do. that does happen. Yes, yeah, we do. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, um, it's, it's something that um, we both enjoy, you know, mm-hmm. to... Um, to have um, a partner like that is uh, something, again, when, when I started clearing out the wreckage of the past and clearing out these things between me and God, mm-hmm. you know, remarkable things can happen for us yeah. when, when we do that work. Mm-hmm. You know, it, and, and you get into the quantum forgiveness of A Course in Miracles. I love that word, quantum. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And, and what, 
what begins to happen is a phenomena that you can't explain. It's just a phenomena that when, when, you, when you do this, this, and this, something happens. It's a phenomenon mm-hmm. that the, I've heard people talk about the endless possibilities, unfathomable possibilities. I've experienced that. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've experienced things that were so out of the ordinary, but when you experience them, you, you can't negate them. I don't care what you tell yeah, me. If you yeah. Were, you know, I, I remember, uh, I was, um, I was working in out, out in the West and I had, had some folks that worked for me that were, um, uh, Indian. They, these were native American Indians and, uh, they had a this great belief in extraterrestrials mm-hmm. and they were deeply spiritual people. And then there were another group that had had experiences around UFOs and things like that. And I was kind of a, at that time, skeptic, skeptic with that. Mm -hmm. But when I would sit with them and then I had an experience with them and their shaman that completely Mm -hmm. changed the way I look at that, you know, um, I, I remember, uh, seeing this this documentary that they did a while back uh, the national press club invited these people in that had had encounters with ufos mm-hmm. and there was this one guy who was this um air force security sergeant that he was telling his story and he said you know i sit at a table with different people and i'm around and i'm listening to other people when this ufo things comes up and there people will say man, I wonder what, what it would be like to see one. I wonder yeah. what it's like. And he said, I'm sitting there going, not only did I see one, mm-hmm. I climbed under one and I touched it. And he tells that with such conviction yeah. that you know he couldn't make that up. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. So the point of my story here is that I can tell you with such conviction that I have experienced the phenomena yeah. of quantum forgiveness that I just would encourage anybody, if you really want an experience mm-hmm. that will change your life, you know, look at some of the things that you've was caught on, oh, I don't know about that. You know, what about this? What about that? You know, my experience came through A Course in Miracles yeah. and what, what it says, you know, and I, I find it interesting. It says A Course. Yeah. It's and just, I hadn't thought about that before. Yeah, yeah. Although I do understand, I mean, the course does say, look, mm-hmm. this is just one path. One path. But, you know, mm-hmm. a course is the title, mm-hmm. not Course in Miracles. Or the course. Or the course, the which way. a lot of people say. Yeah. It's a, a course. It's just one yeah. path. Yeah. 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 So I. And, and I, and, and in, you know, you talk to people and even in, in the writings that, you know, Jesus, what, what he, he sends down to us, um, the experience. It's when you experience something, it never leaves Mm-mm. because you've experienced it. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I, I think that we just, in general, limit ourselves so much. I mean, everyone has had um, instincts and intuition Mm -hmm. and have felt love to a pure, Mm -hmm. powerful Mm -hmm. degree with another individual, Mm -hmm. whether it's their child Mm -hmm. or a partner. You know, there's been moments where we've all experienced these things Mm -hmm. that we minimize. And in what you're saying, I think, and what I've experienced too, is that this doesn't have to be minimized, Mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to God, not that I'm at Z, Mm -hmm. you know, but I've definitely had experiences and I I call it um, because the the course will refer to eternity or heaven. Mm -hmm. And I think of it as we don't have to, we don't have to die to experience heaven. No, no, you don't. Yeah, you don't. I, I've had experiences like what you're talking about yeah. that I would be glad to share with you one-on-one mm-hmm. that you just can't explain that. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Let, let me tell he- you yeah. what happened to me. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, to piggyback, if I might, on sure. what you're saying, 
it's that love that you're talking about. It comes from the love yes. that you can't see. It's not tangible, but it manifests itself here and now just with you and I sitting here. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a presence here. You just can't say it's not here. Right, again. right. So, but what what is behind this? It's that love that mm-hmm. you can't quantify. Like, wow, mm-hmm. I just want some more of that. Right, exactly. What, what do I need to do? Exactly. Are you willing to give up this, give up that? But it's not giving up. It's just doing this to further the journey right. of, of the who and what you really are. This, right. All of, I, I think the whole thing, Adrian, is, is getting down to who and what we really are and that everything that doesn't work towards that development is a distraction. That's right. You know, we, mm-hmm. we have all these things that are going on in the world today, and I understand that. But it seems to distract us from our daily practice. Mm -hmm. You know, do you Mm -hmm. get up in the morning, no matter what goes on in the world, do you get up in the morning and do you connect upon, upon awakening, Mm -hmm. upon awakening, do you connect or, well, I get up and I have my coffee and then I go for the, and I do, and then I do this. Right. Right. Whoa. Wait a minute. Exactly. Wait a minute. Exactly. (laughs) <laughs> what I love about the the course that makes it easy, a course, mm-hmm. <laughs> Miracles, that makes it easier for me is that it, it much of it is about how we should um, look at our brother, how mm-hmm. we should see our brother. But what I love is, because that can be hard for me. Mm-hmm. I might not want to look at my brother in a loving way. Mm-hmm. But what makes it easier is that... <clears throat> It asks us to look at ourselves in a different way. Mm-hmm. And and it's constantly, constantly saying, Jesus in the book mm-hmm. is constantly saying, mm-hmm. you are love. You don't know who you are. You mm-hmm. are perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, if you, uh, there's nothing you can do that would have me not love you and see you in perfection. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I atone for whatever you think you did. Mm-hmm. And just all of that. If I if I can get with that mm-hmm. and accept that, then I can see my brother in a different way. Yes, yeah. I mean there's no qu- it's not no ifs ands or, or buts. buts about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna see you differently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that because it makes it easier. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it you know it, in in recovery in the recovery from substance abuse there in an Alcoholics Anonymous, there's a guy by the name of Chuck C. Mm -hmm. who wrote a book called A New Pair of Glasses. Mm. And in the book, he talks about the disease of alcoholism. And I'm going to say the disease of life here, but in alcoholism, it's a disease of perception. Yes. It's a disease of perception. And and life as I knew it was a disease of perception. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand it. But now with A New Pair of Glasses that I got that works for me through A Course in Miracles, I see it differently. Mm-hmm. I see that what what doesn't make sense to me when I turn that over to the Holy Spirit, it repurposes it. Mm-hmm. It gives me, right. well, did, did you look at it from over here? And I go, well, I don't know if I want to go stand over there. Well, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but from yeah. where I'm standing, mm-hmm. it looks different. Mm-hmm. So whenever I give up that old idea and go stand over here, I go, I never would have thought of that. I love how you said that it repurposes it. Yeah. It, use it, it uses it for another purpose. The, it's used for another purpose. Yeah, it, it, again, the world as I know it mm-hmm. is the fuel to get me home. Right. The Holy Spirit takes all of this, and it was hard for me to grasp that. Right. You know, because I think of, see, I was raised with purpose. First purpose, mm-hmm. I thought, was God-connected. It's ego. His yep. first purpose. Right. Second purpose is the repurpose of the first purpose. <laughs> yes. Do you see? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Holy, the Holy Spirit is the second mm-hmm. purpose to take care of what you thought was first purpose. Right. Right. You go, really? Yeah. Yeah. So give it to him and he'll repurpose that for you and you get out of here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Simple, but not easy. Wow. Well, before I close, mm-hmm. well, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, there are some healing questions, a few healing questions, and you've touched on a lot of this. Um, but there's a couple questions. I just want to see if you have any cons, any thoughts about. Mm -hmm. um, well, what do you think God calls you to do for yourself and others at this point in your life? Hmm. What is, that's a good question. What does God call for me? I think, I think what that's all about for me is to be still mm -hmm. because I don't know what's good for me. Mm -hmm. So I have to wait every day and do the prayer. Well, where would you have me go? What would you have me do? What would you have me say? Mm -hmm. So it, it depends, you know, what I'm going to do that day. What, mm -hmm. what, what is God's, what is God going to purpose me mm -hmm. in, in today? Mm -hmm. You know, what today it was to come here. Mm -hmm. And you I'm know. so grateful for that. Yeah. I, <laughs> tomorrow, I don't know. Right. Yeah. And other people, I, um, it, the, the journey is so highly individualized mm -hmm. that I don't know what's, I don't know how you get home. I just need to look at how I'm going to get home. And, and maybe we'll cross paths, but the spirit will direct that. Right. You know, so your journey home and my journey home, I need to stay out of those swim lanes. Mm -hmm. Is that? Yeah. Stay in your own lane. Stay in my own lane. And then in, by doing that, you do help others that mm -hmm. you encounter. Yeah. 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 And, and we're all, we're all here walking each other home. Mm -hmm. We really are holding hands. We right. can't see it. Right. Right. Yeah. Do you most feel the, the presence of the Spirit of God when you're in that stillness, or mm. is it at other times? Oh, yeah. It's the stillness. You know, that's the language of God is stillness and, yeah. and silence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get out of the monkey mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think you've answered this question about uh, a time when a time when you felt a blessing or a miracle that was not of your doing at all, you knew that was totally God. Yes. Um, and of course, um, it, it talks about, you know, what are miracles? Uh, miracles, according to A Course in Miracles, um, is a change in the way you perceive things. In mm -hmm. other words, I go from thinking with the ego to thinking with the Spirit, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. And it says, if this is not occurring, then there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I first got here talking about miracles, I, I literally thought it was the, you know, the blind will see, the blind mm -hmm. will walk. I really thought that that's what it was. And what has been shown to me is that doesn't have anything to do with a miracle. The miracle has got to everything to do with um when I'm going down the road and somebody cuts me off and I go, or are they trying to whatever? I back up and I let them in mm -hmm. here, come in, you know, or I will slow down. Cause I can tell this guy's going to need a place to go. Mm -hmm. He's going to need to get in there, you mm -hmm. know? So that for me is new behavior, you know, mm -hmm. changing my perception, um, is, is, and seeing things differently is new behavior for me. So I, I have on a more, regular basis now than ever these miracles mm -hmm. every day mm -hmm. where I see something differently because I've I've my part of my practice now is daily forgiveness lessons mm -hmm. you know it's it's your spirit whole and innocent all is forgiven and released mm -hmm. no matter what you do mm -hmm. so I'm constantly going back up back up you're you're your immortal spirit. You're, you're not the body I think you're looking at. And, and that's beginning to catch on. Mm -hmm. So I've had an experience with that, like we were talking about before. Mm -hmm. And when I have an experience with that, that phenomena right. of endless possibilities because of quantum forgiveness begin to take hold in my life. And I see things different and I want more of it. Mm -hmm. And of course, Jesus will tell you, you teach in such a way that people want more because right. they, they feel better. It's right. just working, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's not a, 
it, it, I don't, I'm, I'm careful with it's a reward system. It's not that. Mm-hmm. It's just that I feel better. Right. And I'm not so clogged here. Right. So I have on such a regular basis now when I'm practicing the quantum forgiveness, change in perception, mm-hmm. change in perception. Yeah. I, d- I d- had a revelation as you were talking mm-hmm. because I normally would not say, I wouldn't describe it normally as a change in perception. Mm-hmm. And I understand now, this came up in our group actually a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I understand that now that it's a change in perception. Mm-hmm. I see it as the change in perception creates these other things. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. for me, it is mm-hmm. the impossible is suddenly possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This thing I wanted that I couldn't possibly do mm-hmm. or obtain mm-hmm. or make happen mm-hmm. suddenly can happen mm-hmm. because of my change in perception. Mm-hmm. You know, that quantum thing happens right. because of my change in perception. The other thing that's key that brings me relief is that that change in perception can only be, it, it's only necessary to have a willingness. That's it. Yeah. You know? And that's the only thing yeah. that the Holy Spirit asks of us is a little bit of willingness. Right. And it does the rest. Mm-hmm. But you see, we want to get involved and get its swim lane. Control. Going, yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Because a lot of other things can happen here. Yeah. You just be willing and boy, Heidi, let me show you what I can yeah. do for you. Wow. Wow. Well, I normally ask people if they're a healer or a seeker Mm -hmm. and you're both. Oh, I know you (laughs) you see yourself as a seeker. Yeah. Yeah. But do you see yourself as a healer? No, not really. I I see myself, you know, if, if, if that, if what I can say or do to help you in distress. Yeah. Not in a codependent way. Don't misunderstand. I, I do. But, but, I, I see people on a regular basis and they're in such distress mm-hmm. that you just want to go, if you'll just allow me into your space for a moment and we can talk. Right. Let's just talk. Tell me what your concerns are. Tell me what you're worried about. Mm-hmm. You know, because I probably have them or I've had them and I'll tell you my story with that. Mm-hmm. You know, so the, the, the biggest thing that I found for me in all of this is is I used to think I was very stupid. I wasn't qualified. I wasn't this. I wasn't that. Mm -hmm. It's not that. It's my resistance to the who and what I really am. Because the ego doesn't want me to get there. So it's going to pile this, this, and this, and this on as the resistance. And so it's not that I'm stupid. I'm just resistant to what the Holy Spirit is saying. You're really this. Yeah. And, And it's okay because I'm not going to force anything on you, mm-hmm. but I'll be here. Mm-hmm. I'll be here. Yep. And so it, it's, it's, it, I'm sort of saying not, I don't say yes to God. I say no to the thought system of the ego. And right. somehow or another, that quantum forgiveness and the quantum things that kick in in all of this begin to happen. And, and I began to sort of I'm turning around to the light behind me by saying no to the darkness. Yeah. And that, that mm-hmm. you're, you're speaking to something that you brought up the other day about us. N- we don't have to do anything. Mm-mm. We just have to let go. Just let go. Because we think, you know, we have to do something. But underneath mm-hmm. this thought system mm-hmm. is the peace of God. Yes. So yeah, if we yeah. just let that go, mm-hmm. that that thought system that, you know, I'm bad, I'm wrong, you know, I did this, I did that, that I shouldn't have done. Mm-hmm. If 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 I can be forgiving mm-hmm. of these ideas yeah. and let that go, mm-hmm. surrender it to the Holy Spirit, yeah. then underneath that is the peace. The, the Buddha says, enter from the now. And I used to go, well, what does that mean, enter from the now? Mm-hmm. And I think for me, what he's telling me is that step out of what you think is r- your reality into the holograph of the real reality. Step into the now, enter from the now into this holographic experience 
where you're going to meet some people in there that you're going to identify with. Mm -hmm. But you have to do the willingness to enter this new now. Yeah. There's a new now. And when you enter in there, we start talking about things like synchronicity and, Mm -hmm. oh, well, this happened and I went and I heard just what I needed to hear. Well, what I've come to understand is all of that's going on at the same time. But because I'm such a babe in the woods, I can only hear one little thing. So it looks like I, I showed up and I heard what I needed to hear. And then I hear something over here when it's really doing it all the time. Mm-hmm. I just can't see it. Yeah. I just can't see it. Mm-hmm. I think I'm having a synchronistic experience when it's all happening at once. Mm-hmm. Only, you know, Jesus said, well, this needs to be beatific, not horrific. Yeah. And I, I see just how vulnerable I am you know, Mm -hmm. in, in all of this. So being in a room and Brene Brown, boy, she's doing a lot of work now with vulnerability. And Mm -hmm. I encourage anybody, if you want some healing in your life, explore some of the things she has to say. And, and when we all get together, it's the vulnerability that we bring to the room that produces the healing Mm -hmm. because things that, it gets very powerful in there, doesn't it? It really, really Man, does. The way that we fire off of each other, uh-huh. you know, it's in that room and it's like, it's lightning in there mm-hmm. and, and we do well and then we leave, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it's, now we're having to fire way out, way out. Right. But when you bring us in that room, the firings are close and they're really intense. Mm-hmm. So we go back to get that. Right. And, and it's not an emotional thing. It's right. in the high mind. Right. It's in a high mind. Right. Because I don't get emotional. Mm-hmm. It's just in this high mind, new. And, and I, I leave consciousness and I go to awareness, which seems to be above consciousness because mm-hmm. I'm real aware mm-hmm. of these firing. Yeah. And it's not so synchronistic. It's just how life can be. Mm-hmm. Imagine taking what we experience with Clarice or we experience at Anne's. Mm-hmm. And living in that your whole life. Yeah. Holy cow. Could you, we all, we travel in, we travel in the yellow submarine (laughs) together, you see? Yeah. Everywhere we go, because that's all part of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone in that room is a part of us. And when we have to separate from that, it's like, oh, I'll see you next week. Right. Um, we'll it's, a de- it's a definite energy. <laughs> yeah. And that's why we try to keep that with us. Mm-hmm. We try to do the practice, right. you know, daily. Yeah. And we're do, on a, do a practice. With, yeah, yeah. With each other. Mm-hmm. And it, I think it's we're, we're trying to mimic. We're trying to, to mimic what's getting ready to happen eventually. Mm-hmm. And, and we'll be in that awareness all the time. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I so enjoyed this. Thank yeah. you so very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Remember, you can listen to all of our episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and our podcast YouTube channel. Remember also to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. And send me that email at Let's Start Healing Podcast at gmail.com. Let's start healing.